CageMinds.com. It's fight week, King of the Cage Rise, Las Cruces, New Mexico. And on the main card, pro fighter, Tim Sosa. You got a rematch coming up. First off, how you feeling though? I feel great. Um, you know, my weight's low. Uh, that's how I like it. I feel strong. I feel fast. Uh, I'm focused. I'm ready to do this. Alan Lerma, it's the rematch. How excited are you for this bout? Um, you know, I, I just, I wouldn't, you know, I'm excited to have it, but I'm not, like, going crazy. I'm just focused. I'm just ready to get in there and, and just show what, uh, what people have been missing from me lately. And, um, I'm, I'm just ready to do this. Let's go. It's been six months. How much is the excitement at least to get back to action? It's been a while. Uh, definitely excited to fight again. And um, I, more importantly, I'm excited. I, I'm going to have uh, some people there, and I'm, I'm definitely more excited to show them what I can do and, and what I'm about. And then first time actually as a pro under the King of the Cage banner, what's that like from you after such a long amateur career with the promotion? I'm, I'm definitely t happy to be fighting back for them. Um, King of the Cage, you know, after I had a lot of fights with them and it uh, definitely feels like home. And, um, like, uh, you know, def even though we're fighting in Alan Lerma's hometown, I, I feel like he'll be the visitor there. That's my cage. And, uh, you know, I know, you know, there won't be any mi mishaps at King of the Cage. Mishaps. Rock to gone. We don't even know who was who. You guys were announced. You were announced as Alan Lerman. He was announced as Tim Sosa. A split decision. Did you want to rip out your hair? Man, uh, I tell you what, I, I, I was such, I felt like such a victim. I went in the back and just raged out. I, uh, I was throwing shit. I was, uh, you know, I was punching shit. Um, I, I just, you know, they say, uh, they say, don't let it go to the judges. You know, you never know what they're looking, looking for, or, or what they're looking at, and uh, they'll make you cry every time, as they say in the UFC. Well, they they made me cry, and I never thought it could happen to me. And in the way that it happened, I was just, I was just blown away. Every the crowd was blown away. My coaches were blown away. The, the referee was blown away. The even the announcer was blown away. It was. It was horrible. Looking at that scenario from the three minute rounds that were supposed to be five minute rounds and there's just so much we could lift off, does that make you hesitant to ever take a fight in Texas again or even though Roctagon's the last time they've had an event to ever maybe fight with them if they do do something again? No, um, I'll definitely fight in, in Texas, I'll definitely fight in uh, anywhere, anytime. Um, you know, I'm a fighter, and that's what I do. Uh, we'll just, um, I don't know, but uh, I definitely feel confident that that's not going to happen again. Um, it's especially with, you know, uh, with the legitimate promotions that are out there. You were someone that's very proud of your finishes, and you've always been out there for the finisher. If it's possible, did this, like, make you want to get finishes even more now? Uh, I've never lost the focus to, to finish, and I'm always going for that. Um, definitely just as motivated. Uh, you know, I, uh, I can finish it anywhere on the feet uh, or on the ground. Um, I'm just going to go out there and, and uh, not, um, I'm not going to get frustrated, and that's, that's about the only difference, and uh, I, I, I feel like that played a big a big part in me not getting the finish in the uh, first fight. So with how much all of this other stuff weighed into your mind, do you think there's anything going into the fight that you need to change about your approach towards it or it's just keeping all that other stuff off to the side as it doesn't matter? You know, I felt uh, like I told Tom and, and JJ before uh, I walked out for that fight, I. Uh, I felt like I had never been on that level before. I felt I never felt like that before. I felt uh, amazing. I, I told him I felt like something amazing is going to happen, and uh, it all changed. Um, I was I, I feel I was well on the way to making that happen until 
I lost my cool when all of a sudden the five minute round ended in three minute round. I, I felt like I was robbed of, um, of uh, you know, what I had to show. I know that's not gonna happen in King of the Cage. So um, I, uh, I definitely feel like uh, fans have something good to say. As everything did bother you, how much did it take to get over everything to move on from what had happened at, at Roctagon? Man, I'm, I'm still not over it, to be honest, you know. Uh, we're in an arbitration process to try and get that contest changed, uh, to, to get that decision changed. I don't know, I don't know what the status of that is like, but um, the best I can come of it is like a, a no contest. And it's just something that's gonna bother me for the, for the rest of my life. And, uh, but this is uh, definitely one, one way uh, probably the best way uh, to move on from that is uh, to finish Alan Lerman. We know you want that finish. Do you feel like that you need to make that statement because you felt so robbed last time? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I definitely feel you need to make a statement in every fight. But, uh, you, you know, it, if, you, if you had seen the fight, you know who, who won. But when you look at the record, um, you know, there's that's where the controversy comes from. So uh, I definitely need to make a, a statement and show who the real winner was that night. I know in the second round of that fight, you threw up a lot of submissions. Did you ever look at it and think, you know, it could just be a case of moronic judging because there's still that stereotype out there that top means winning, even if you're defending the whole time. Yeah, uh, you know, I I, th I think that maybe might play. A I definitely, uh, to go off your question, Moronic judging did, did play 100% uh, a part in that fight. Um, I'm not sure that, I mean, the announcers or the, the commentators had, had me winning that round. Everyone that was in attendance had me winning that round. Uh, Southwest fight had me winning that round. Um, you know, I hit two takedowns. I hit, uh, I had five submission attempts and I maybe got hit five times at most in that round. Um, I don't think, I didn't get pat, my guard didn't get passed or anything. I don't think, I don't think they judged him, his, his position, his time on top as winning it for him. I think that they thought I was Alan Lerma the whole time I was, I was working from the bottom. So you think that that initial announcement at the beginning that the judges looked at it and they thought that in the red corner right you were in the red corner yeah was um, alan lermer and the blue corner was tim sosa i i don't remember what uh what corner i was in i think i was in the blue they announced for those of you that didn't see the fight they announced him as me and me as him um but uh like when we asked to see when my coach asked to see the scorecards after the fight they, they did provide them for us, but uh, on a standard scorecard, you have like red corner, this fighter, blue corner, this fighter. Well, none of that was on there. And then when he asked, my coach asked, okay, so you're the, you're the judge, uh, you watch the fight. This is your scorecard. Can you tell me who's who? They straight up said, I, I don't know, I can't. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Six that. months between fights, the training camp before. How ready are you to just get Alan Lerma out of your mind to get this all put behind you? I've, I've, I've been, you know, I was ready after the first fight, and then now I'm stuck. Instead of moving on, um, I'm stuck thinking about it. I'm definitely ready to just, you know, I have, I don't have a problem with him. He, he was a very respectful fighter, and uh, to me, but. Uh, uh, I just, I'm just ready to be done with him and, and not have to think about him anymore. Six months, how much have you been able to grow in that time? I've, I've grown a lot. I've been in here, I was, you know, pissed off. I was in the gym right back, right away. And uh, I was helping Ray Borg train for uh, Nick Urso, and then uh, Dustin Ortiz, and um, his last opponent, Shane Howell. I've been in there constantly, just you know, helping my teammates, just like they're helping me. And uh, 
but <laughs> definitely ready for a vacation, even just even just a, a weekend off. So, do you think you're gonna see? It's been six months. You've been working really hard. Do you think you're gonna see a new Alan Lerma out there? Um, you know, I I, I definitely hope so. You know, I want to fight. I uh, I don't want what we had in the first, and uh, I know he had a fight with Paco Castillo, and I'm pretty sure he won. Um, but. Uh, you know, I, I hope so, and uh, I look forward to whatever he has to bring, and uh, I'm going to bring it as well. So, with that time, the six months, this, how do you prepare, almost thinking, you know what this guy is going to bring at you, but you don't want to be, you know, too sure of it in case he does surprise you, because everyone changes every fight. You know, um, I feel, I feel liberated, actually. I, uh, you know, I don't know what he's going to do. I've, uh... I'm not too worried. Instead, I'm focusing about what I'm gonna do, and I don't even have a game plan. I don't have, I don't have a strategy. I don't have like combinations. I just know, you know, fight the fight that I'm gonna do. I, I kind of feel, you know, I'm free to do anything in there, and uh, I, I, I'm gonna just, you know, flow. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let what what happens happen, let what comes to me comes to me, and I'm gonna paint a masterpiece in that. So it sounds like a new mindset of this free in the wind spirit. What bring this about? Uh, definitely, definitely. I, I think that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> we got the fight coming up. I know you got people to thank. Who is it? Um, definitely want to thank De Delano and uh, Vic at Damage Control. Um, I want to thank Anthony Torres at Recompute. If you guys need, have any computer work to be done, hit him up on Facebook. Uh, I want to thank my uh, lawyer, Gilbert Arzola, Arzola Lula. Um, definitely my family, my friends, my teammates. You guys are at, at Finan HB. You guys are like family to me. Uh, my coaches, and I want to thank you, uh, Micah Frankel, for bringing me here for some fun today. <laughs> and last thing, we know you're Mr. Food Porn. What, what's the newest thing you've been eating? What's the newest thing you've been on? Um, <laughs> the newest thing I've been on is my diet. Uh, but uh, afterwards, um, yeah, talk to me then. Talk <laughs> to me after the fight. We look forward to it. Best of luck, sir. Thank you. We'll see everybody down there. Las Cruces, King of the Cage Rise, this Friday. Guys,